Now we're going to have a look at a simple example of how to use Ruminate to formulate and fine tune a diet for lactating dairy cows. We start by, as always, going to our animal tab and describing our cow, which represents the average cow in the herd. Now I've already set this up to save a bit of time. You, you can see that it's a 600 kilo animal and she's producing 25 litres of milk, 4% fat, 3.2% protein. And our farm is fairly typical of Western Australia over summer, a flat farm, the cow's not walking that far because they're being fed in a paddock so they're not grazing. Once we've got the cow sorted out, let's choose the relevant feeds from the feed library. Now, again, a fairly typical summer feed um, range for us in WA. We've got a ryegrass clover silage of average quality and some wheat and some lupins on hand and a calcium supplement if we need it. Now, I'm just going to use the library feeds for this example, but if you were doing this on your property, we assume that you'd have feed test values and you'll have made copies of these feeds and adjusted the values of the ME, crude protein, fibre, all the rest of it to match your feeds. Firstly, we need an initial estimate of what we think the cow is eating. Now we guess she's getting around about 15 kilos of dry matter out in the paddock of the silage, so let's put 15 in there. And we know she's getting five kilos of wheat grain as fed in the dairy, so let's get five kilos in there. Now before we go any further, let's just go over and double check our milk prices and our feed costs. Cross to the milk price tab, and yes, we're getting 50 cents per litre, that's fine, so we can leave that as it is. And let's just have a quick look at the feed costs and make sure they're up to date. Uh, we've estimated that our silage is costing us $175 a tonne dry matter and we're paying $270 a tonne as fed for the wheat, $340 for the, the lupins, both of those delivered on farms into our silo. We'll leave the losses at zero just for simplicity, um, but if you know that you're, you're getting losses after you've purchased the feed, you can adjust this to match. Now if we go down to the bottom of the screen you can have a look and see that even with this simple diet to start with it's costing us just under $4 a day to feed our cows and our milk income is $12.50 a day. So that's giving us a margin of $8.53 per cow and for the herd where we've put in we've got a herd of 200 animals we've got a margin of $1,705. So that gives us our starting point for the diet. Now let's have a first check of how well our diet is performing. So we turn to the diet tab. The bars and colours will give you a quick overview of how you're going so far. Dry matter intake is at 94%, uh, so we know we haven't exceeded the cow's ability to eat the diet, but she can eat more. ME is at 99%, so we're pretty much covered there. There's, a, there's about the right amount of energy in the diet for our level of production. Unfortunately, protein um, is falling well short of the uh, of what the requirements for the cow at 83%, so we need to get some more protein in the diet. Calcium is also falling well short of the requirements for the cow at only 63%. Phosphorus is slightly short in demand, um, but it's probably close enough. Magnesium, we're exceeding the cow's requirements. Down the bottom of the tab you can see NDF content of the diet is 42%, starch is 16%, and they're not ideal, but um, it's a good first start. They're acceptable. If we go now to the diet detail tab, we can see in more detail uh, exactly what's going on. Now we know our MP is a problem, and you can see here that we're minus 317. So we're short 317 grams of MP a day for our cow for her level of production. And the other big problem with the diet is the, the amount of calcium in it. And you can see down here that we're negative 18. 0.3, so we're short just over 18 grams per day of calcium in the diet. Now this is our base diet, so let's just switch across to the compare tab and save that into slot one. So then we can go back and see whether we've improved or made things worse when we start making changes. Now we're going to need to correct the problems with this diet or else our cows are not going to be able to meet or maintain the level of production we've set for them on the animal tab. We've got access to some feed supplements on this farm, so we can increase the protein supply using lupins or canola meal, and they cost $340 or $400 per tonne respectively. And we've got access to dicalcium phosphate, and it costs $100 a tonne. Now let's have a go at adjusting the levels of wheat and lupins in the diet and see whether we can sort out our lack of MP. Let's go back to the diet tab, and 
let's drop the wheat grain levels down. So let's drop them down to three and put in a couple of kilos of lupins and see what that does. Still not enough protein, but our ME is staying pretty consistent. Let's drop that down to one and put another couple of kilos of lupins in and still not really enough MP there. So it looks like we can pretty much take out all the wheat and replace it with lupins. And then we get two green bars. We've got enough ME and we've got enough protein. Now we're still short of calcium, so let's put a little bit of dicalcium phosphate in. If we put in 65 grams or 60 grams into there, and there we go, we've got pretty much enough calcium and we've exceeded our requirements for phosphorus as well and the magnesium was okay before. This diet now meets our ME and MP requirements as well as the demand for calcium and phosphorus but it still does have some shortcomings. In particular the starch content has declined dramatically as wheat which is rich in starch has been replaced by lupins which are low in starch. Of course the diet's also more expensive because we've replaced relatively cheaper wheat with more expensive lupins. As a result down in the bottom right hand corner here you can see our margin per day has been reduced to $8.17. Now that's not really a fair comparison because the original diet, whilst it had a better margin, really wasn't sustainable because it didn't have enough protein and calcium. Now let's save this diet in the compare tab. Slot two is free, so you just hit the S button in slot two and that diet's saved. So it gives us the option to recall it later on if we want to. Finally, let's have a look at an alternative option which aims to increase the starch and reduce the NDF content of the diet to levels which are more desirable but minimising the impact those changes are going to have on the margin over feed cost. So to do this, let's put wheat back into the diet but this time we won't just replace it with lupins but we'll also replace silage and playing around with those three um, feeds try and get a diet which has got lower NDF and more starch. So first off, let's reduce the amount of silage. Let's drop that back to 12.6 kilograms. We want some wheat back in, so let's make that three and a half kilos of wheat. Now, now we're um, way over on ME and protein, so we need to reduce the amount of lupins. So let's drop those back to 3.7 kilograms per day. And that's not looking too bad, but we're still very short of calcium. So let's switch that dicalcium phosphate out and use limestone instead and let's just put that up a little bit to 70 grams a day. There we go. So now we've got a diet which is not overfeeding the cow, meeting the ME requirements, meeting the MP requirements, calcium's fine, phosphorus is close enough, 98% of requirements, and magnesium's still exceeding requirements, but we've dropped our NDF level in the diet down to 40%, which is more acceptable, and more importantly, we've lifted the starch to 12%, which is much better and we haven't had a huge impact on margin. That's only dropped now to $8.09. To get a better idea of how the margins have progressed through this example, let's go back to the compare tab and save this diet into slot three. And now you can see where we started off with the base diet, where we took a bit of a guess at what the cows were eating, and we ended up with a margin of $8.53. But that really isn't a fair value because it wasn't supporting the level of production that the cow had been set to. We tidied the diet up a bit and made sure that the cow could perform on it and we had a margin of $8.17 and then in the last example we've improved that diet again and um, lifted the starch and reduced the NDF in it and we've only dropped the margin by another eight cents. So we're much more comfortable with this diet even though the margin has dropped a little bit. This brief example illustrates how Ruminate can be used to explore the impact of ingredient changes on the nutritional and financial performance of our diet for our dairy cows.